disused stations of the Wirral Peninsula. For this episode, we're going to explore the area between Birkenhead down the main line to Hooton. We're going to start the journey at Birkenhead Woodside. This presentation is brought to you by Blighty PC for on site business and home IT support solutions. Here at the site of Woodside Station, we show what remains today of this once grandioso station. It was built in 1878 to replace an increasingly inadequate passenger facilities at Birkenhead Monks Ferry. In order to join up with the Chester and Birkenhead Railway, a half mile long tunnel from Woodside along the existing Monks Ferry Tunnel entrance near Grange Lane was constructed using the cut and cover method which most of its length is now running underneath Chester Street. The station building had two semi-cylindrical roofs covering much of the platform. However, given its size, it only had five short but wide platforms. The station was known locally for being the wrong way round, because for the majority of the station's life, its rear entrance was used as a main booking hall, whereas Woodside's front entrance was mainly used for handling parcels. Woodside was the terminus for local services to Chester, Helsby and West Kirby. Routes further afield included the Great Western Railway. GWR provided services through Wrexham, Wolverhampton, Birmingham and on to London Paddington. But the Beeching Act of 1963 recommended the closure of three of Merseyside's mainline terminal stations, Liverpool Exchange, Liverpool Central High Level and Birkenhead Woodside. For Woodside, Exchange and Liverpool Central High Level, it meant that long and median distance routes would be served by Liverpool Lime Street, and local urban routes would be served by the stations in the new Mersey Rail urban network. We have been showing what evidence of Woodside still exists. The gates to the station have been reused in a house in Gayton. The rest of the land is used as a bus park and Woodside's business park. The half mile tunnel access to the site is not impeded, giving the provision for trams or other forms of transport if future need is there. Before we reach the first disused station at Birkenhead Town, we're going to explore two branch lines. The first is at Monks Ferry. Monks Ferry Station opened in 1838 were closed due to a legal wrangle with the operators of Woodside Ferry, but consequently reopened in 1844. The provision was made for an internal rail connection to the shipbuilders at Camel Erds, which lay to the south of the station. Via a set of sidings, the station closed to freight in 1961, although the station and track survived until 67. The site has now been cleared with little evidence remaining apart from this stone wall and a residential development now occupies the area. The other branch line which segregated at Birkenhead Town went off to Birkenhead Docks. Birkenhead Dock branch is now disused and has been since 1993. Although it's called the branch, the line is actually accessible from both ends. From the Bidston Junction end at one end and the Rock Ferry Station at the other. Haymarket Tunnel is a low cutting straight through the centre of Birkenhead and it's visible from roads and flyovers. Canning Street North signal box and level crossing are situated on this branch. Level crossing are also located by Duke Street and the Wallasey Bridge Road. The steel railway lines are still intact and they were never raised. A lot of the track work around the docks are still in place. However, most of the sidings at Bidston Dock and all of the sidings of Wallaby Bridge Road and Mollington Street Depot have been removed, though the track foundation remains serviceable in all of these places. Amongst the few and final passenger workings on the line was the Birkenhead Bandit Tour, Hallplier Class 40 locomotive in 1985. Others include the Mersey Meanderer Tour of 86, the Wirral Withenshire's Charter, also of 86, 
and the Cheshire Cat Charter of 1989. There have been plans to connect the Wirral Waters project to the Merseyrail network at Birkenhead North, utilising the stretch of Dock Branch alongside Beaufort Road and Corporation Road. Options to connect this new system to Conway Park and Birkenhead Park are also available. Let's go back to the main line and town junction to have a look at the disused station located there. Birkenhead Town Station was opened in 1889 and is located by the entrance of the Queensway or Birkenhead Tunnel. Originally opened by the Birkenhead Joint Railway, it was also run by the GWR and LNWR, close to passengers in 1945 and completely in 1961. It is still currently demolished as you can see, sections of the booking office still remain. The line which is on the London Paddington to Birkenhead Wood side also acts as a junction towards Monks Ferry Station and Birkenhead Docks as well as Woodside Station. From Birkenhead Town you can get long distance to the likes of London Paddington and local services. After its demolition in 1961 nature has taken over. But entrances to the tunnels and some of the station walls can clearly be seen. Eckenhead Town is one of Wirral's lost stations. The next station at Tranmere is little known. However, it did close over 150 years ago. Tramier Station was on the Chester and Birkenhead Railway. It opened in 1846 and closed in 1857. It consisted of two platforms, but only one up till 1847. Its location can be seen down the tracks from Rock Ferry Station towards Birkenhead, just beyond the bridge, but just before those workmen. It opened originally as Lime King Lane and was later renamed as St Paul's Road and finally changed to Tramvia in 1853. In 1847 the railway became part of the Birkenhead, Lancashire and Cheshire Junction Railway. The company doubled the track, which up to this point had been a single track. This is the most likely time for the second platform to have been added. In 1891, the Mersey Railway Company opened a double track extension and at the same time the Birkenhead and Chester line was quadrupled, destroying any evidence of the station site. A closer view of the station location can be seen on St Paul's Road, just by the bridge. The next disused station is at Rock Lane. Rock Lane Station is also little known, but it's located just down the tracks from Rock Ferry Station. From this old map, you can see the railway line passing under the road, which is now Rock Lane West, and you can just make out the short ramp supplying the platform. It was used to serve the Chester and Birkenhead Railway, and it opened in 1846 and closed in 1862 and it consisted of two platforms, but only one up to 1847. In 1847 the track was doubled. This is when the second platform was probably added. In 1862 Rock Lane Station closed to be replaced by a new station just a short distance up the line called Rock Ferry. And in 1891 the Chester line was quadrupled and any remains were destroyed. The next disused station, or should we say a disused branch platform, is all the way down the line at Hooton. However, Hooton station is still very active, but it has an almost hidden, abandoned platform off to one side. This platform supplied access to the West Kirby branch line, which is now called the Wirral Way. By accessing the Wirral Way just to the side of the railway bridge, some old railway paraphernalia can still be spotted. The site of the old tracks and abandoned platform can be clearly seen on this network rail access road. 
back on the Wirralway walkway, the platform edge and old waiting room are obvious. Now it's the start of a 12 mile walk, but back then it's the start of a train journey passing through many abandoned and lost stations all the way to West Kirby. In the next part we explore the Hooton to West Kirby branch line.